In this video, we're going to talk about how to customize your invoices and estimates in QuickBooks Online. Let's start by clicking on the new button on the left hand side and let's go ahead and click on invoice. So by default, you're going to get the standard default template in QuickBooks Online for invoices. There's a couple of things you can change, a lot of things you cannot change, so you kind of have to be patient with it. First thing that you see on the, on the top right is the add logo. So if I click on add logo, I go find my logo in my computer, I can add the logo in there. Okay. Then you see your logo on the right hand side, you can X out of that, that's really all you can do. It makes you feel like you can move it, but you can't. Okay. That's, that's where the logo is going to be. We're going to go through all the different settings. Now if you click on manage, on the top of the screen, it says manage, you're going to see the drawer show up on the right hand side. And then here's where you can do all your settings. If I click on edit default settings, this is going to take me to uh, the sales settings screen. And I have an entirely different video where I talk about all of these uh, settings. Uh, but for now, let's just talk about those in particular. And then here, when I click on edit, I can turn on which of these fields I want enabled in my invoice templates or in my sales templates. So if I want a shipping line, if I want a service date, if I want a discount, if I want a deposit, if I want to accept tips, that sort of thing, uh, you have the option to add all those things. So when I click on save, now it turned on all the settings and then we can always go back and, and, and turn them off. So I'm going to X out of that and I'm going to go back into my invoice one more time and then I should go back into my template. Now when I click on customization, all these things are turned on. Again, I can turn any of these off. So let's say I, I don't want to see a ship to address. I do want to see a ship to address. I don't want to see an invoice number. I do want to see an invoice number. Notice this right here. It shows it right here. I want to see an invoice date. I don't. I want to see a due date. I don't. I want to see terms. I don't. I want to see a service date. That's going to be down here in the, in the line items of the products and services that I'm selling. So if you don't want to see a separate service date because the service date is irrelevant, you turn that off. If you want to see the SKU number or not, you would turn that on. So you have all these different options of all the things you can turn off and on. And then if you have any custom fields here that you need, we can click on manage. That's going to take me to the screen for the custom fields. For now, let me just make sure that I, I save. Then I'm going to click on manage, leave without saving. And then we're going to turn on the custom fields. So when I click on add custom fields, let's say I want to have a custom fields for a supervisor or salesperson or something like that. And then I turn it on on the sales forms and then I can choose whether or not I want that printed, not just showing on the screen. What's cool about custom fields is you can either just display them so that the accountant, the QuickBooks user can see the information or you can actually print it if you want. To. So then I click on save and that turns off, uh, turns on my custom field and I can turn on a couple of custom fields. So let's say I want to have one that says uh, region, or something like that. And then I would turn that on. Let's say I don't want to print that and click on save. I add one more. Let's say I want to call this one uh, delivery date uh, preference. Start thinking about all the things that matter to your business and what kind of what kind of things you would want to track or not, and decide what kind of stuff you want to print or not. That's up to you. So you click on save. So I have my three uh, custom fields. This is the maximum you can do up to three custom fields um, total. That's it. So I'll go back into new and go into invoice. And sorry, I want to add one more thing. If you're using QuickBooks Online Advanced Edition, this is the most expensive, you can do up to 25 custom fields. So this limitation of three, it's only for simple start, essentials, or, and plus. So the most advanced has a lot more than three custom fields. Anyway, so now that we have the custom fields enabled, notice that now they show up on the invoice template. And the ones that say hidden are the ones that don't print. So they're showing on the screen, but they don't print. On the payment options, uh, here's where we can uh, enable whether or not we want our customers to be able to pay us with a credit card or pay us digitally. Now you do have to set up a merchant account. And by the way, um, you can do this on your own here by using the, the, the regular process. But if you are gonna set this up, you don't have a merchant account yet in QuickBooks Online, email me and I'm gonna put you in contact with a person at Intuit that uh, QuickBooks that sets this up and it gives you a little bit better deal than you get by going retail. Uh, because I am a, um, a reseller, a QuickBooks solution provider, I can give my customers a better rate than the retail rate. So don't set it up through the regular process. Wait a day, email me, and I'll have my quick QuickBooks person contact you. It's the exact same product. It's just going to have a better rate. Anyway, uh, so when, once you have that enabled, you'll be able to choose 
whether somebody can pay you via Venmo, PayPal, Visa, uh, Apple Pay. Once you have uh, merchants or payments enabled, you'll be able to choose um, to, to give the customer the option to pay you with that. Um, and then uh, when you go into uh, the payment section, this is where you would configure or, or set anything up with that account. So again, that's showing up. Those buttons are showing up there because in this particular account, that stuff is not enabled yet. Uh, once that's enabled, it's just going to be a checkbox for turning off and on. Then at the bottom, you get to pick what you want to see. So if you want to see all the way in the header, invoice total, if I turn that off, you don't see the total. I guess most people want to see that. Um, whether or not you want to have a deposits uh, box, and this, this this manage button is really important because you have to pick, you know, what type what type of payment method and what type of account the deposit goes into when you get paid a deposit. So sometimes that becomes kind of confusing to have deposits in the invoice screen. Uh, I generally like to have a separate payment, maybe a different topic for a different video. But if you want to see a deposit box in there. Uh, you will turn that on if you want to see a discount box in there and you get to pick whether you want a straight dollar invoice or just a percentage invoice. Um, here's You can set up your sales tax if you have sales tax and a shipping fee if you want to charge shipping separately. Again, all these things, discounts, shipping, deposits, that could also be done on line items if you configure the items correctly. Uh, also a different topic for a different video. And then um, anything with multi-currency, you will set that up as well. Then under design, um, the current template is the modern template. But if you want to do uh, multiple templates, you can click on manage and you can go into that screen. We'll do that in a second. On this particular template, I get to choose a general color. So if I want uh, oranges or reds or greens, purples, whatever, I get to pick what kind of colors I want to see. I get to pick from a couple of options on fonts. Okay, Not, not so many options. Uh, unfortunately, it's not... You know, it's, it's not Photoshop, okay. Um, and then down here says automation. Uh, we can uh, turn on this invoice as a recurring invoice and also turn on invoice reminders. And you can say whether you want the automatic reminders to happen three days before they're due, three days after. This stuff is really, really neat. It's more the automation part of it. Okay, so once you're done uh, doing this general part of the customization, you can actually uh, then start creating your invoice. So I'm gonna go ahead and create my new customer. And let's call this customer A and then save that. Okay, and then here's where I have my build to and my ship to address, assuming they're different. Again, if I go to customization, I can turn off that ship to address and just have a build to address. So if that's confusing, uh, you don't have to have those two boxes in there. If you want to edit that customer, you click on edit customer and it takes you into the customer edit screen, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and then here you would get you would pick all your things. So you would pick uh, 60 day terms. You would you can add your own invoice number if you turn that on. There's actually a setting in the settings section where you can turn off invoice num manual numbering, and then you just have to use the numbering that QuickBooks gives you. But let's say you want to start with 14,501, and you want that to kind of be like the first invoice number. The next one will be 14,502. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Then you put your uh, your information on your custom fields, okay, whatever information you want to fill out here, and and then you start uh, you know selecting all the transact all the transaction information. So stuff like tags, uh, your product and service, the the description if uh, uh, if, if you have one. So we can put uh, install in home, and then you can do your quantity. So let's say two times five hundred, whatever it is. There's my $1,000 invoice. Again, we can use Control Plus and Control mi Minus if I want to zoom in and out, depending on the size of your screen. Resolution, all that stuff, you get to pick um, you know, what kind of zoom settings you want to have. Uh, and then down here, you see your subtotals, your sales tax. Again, we'll do an entirely different video with sales tax. Sales tax is more complex. And then if you want to put a discount here, so I want to do 15% or something like that that gets applied in there. And then you get to see the total, um, the total invoice. Uh, and then on the edit totals, this is where you get to, again, configure what you want those totals uh, to look like. So in a nutshell, that's really all you do to configure um, the general settings of your invoices. You can add an attachment. If you click on email view, you get to see exactly what the email is going to look like. If you email the invoice from here, if you see the PDF view, you're going to see exactly what it's going to look like when somebody is going to print the invoice or, or view it as a PDF. And then the payer view, it's what it looks like when somebody uh, receives the invoice and they're about to pay you electronically. When you turn on payments, you get to see what their payment screen 
uh, looks like when they receive uh, the email. And then they can actually view the invoice and pay uh, electronically once that's uh, set up. So a pretty simple um, setup. I'm going to go ahead and save this um, this invoice. And then I'm going to click on either review and send or uh, or print and download. So you kind of see that, that workflow. So if I click on print and download, it's going to open up the PDF for me. And there it is. I can zoom in and out. And that's what it will look like if you print it. So pretty straightforward. Um, and that was the same thing we saw on the previous screen. If you email it, if you click on review and send, you will be emailing this to your customer. So make sure you put your uh, customer's email in here. So customer at email.com. Uh, and, uh, and you just click on send and, and you can customize the message or go back into the settings and set up the default message you want to see in there was really cool. If you click on manage online delivery settings, it'll take you straight into the settings uh, section where you can uh, manage uh, this information. And also in the messages part, you can change what the default messages look like. So we'll go back into invoice one more time. And then I'm going to click on this little recent transactions button so I can go back and view the last invoice that I have. And, um, and essentially that's it. There's really not that much uh, you can do from here. But once the invoice is created, if I click on manage, there's a little button here that says actions. And then you can do a couple of other things. You can make a copy or a duplicate. You can delete, you can void. You can look at the audit history. If other users have been changing it, you want to see what's been changed. You can view the transaction journal, which will show you basically like a debit credit journal entry style of that uh, transaction, which is pretty neat. We go back into the invoice under actions. Um, that's how, how you do sort of like the next step of the transactions. Receive payment, obviously, is going to be um, a very a very popular uh, next step that we use. And then here's a st uh, status open. You will actually see a history of every time your customer opens the invoice, views it. Uh, so if the customer tells you, I never got your invoice, you can actually view that here. So that's a pretty awesome a feature that you see uh, built uh, built in there. Now, the only one thing I want to show you is I'm actually going to X out of this. It's another section in QuickBooks Online where you can manage all your templates. If I click on the gear menu and click on custom form styles and I click on that, all the templates that are created are going to be showing up in here. And if I click on edit, you're going to see a slightly different screen to configure your your template. Um, and it kind of looks, it looks it looks similar, but not the same. So you can you can mess with the template in here, but then you really, really do need to go back into the into the um, into the actual invoice and preview it to see what it's going to look like. But what what's significantly different on this screen versus the other screen is when you click on content, you can actually get to choose which particular uh, columns of data in the actual line item information you want to see. So if you don't want to see description, you don't want to see product and service, you don't want to see quantity, you don't want to see rate, you want to see SKU, and let's say you, you want to see um, uh, 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 quantity and rate right on the description, you get to do tweak, you get to tweak a little bit of the actual sort of meat and potatoes of the line items of the invoice itself. So if you go to preview PDF, uh, you get to see that this looks a little bit different than the, the last template because this template actually um, uh, just, just looks different. So keep that in mind that if you use this uh, sort of configurator and you click on done, when you go and, um, and actually create the invoice, so I'm gonna just clarify something, you create the invoice and go to manage, under customization, uh, is, it, is it under design actually, under design, uh, notice that there's the modern view, which is the one that we're looking at the screen right now. But if I actually click on standard, what happens is I, I still get to visually see sort of the new design, but when I go print it, um, it's actually going to show me uh, the, let me just open up the, the last invoice here. So right now under, wait until that loads. Right now under design, under the modern view, that's what I just showed you. So if I go to print and download, you get to see the, the first sort of setting that we set up. But if I go back into the invoice, and then I, I pick the older templates and I click on standard. I'm going to save it. And then I do a print and download. You're going to notice that the, the, this, the template will look different in PDF. So keep that in mind that there's also this sort of a legacy um, invoice 
designer, and then there's the modern, which is the one that you see on this screen. So this is probably more relevant for people that have uh, older QuickBooks Online files where they've had the old, old template, but everything really, it's moving towards this new modern view, which is the one where everything is sort of live preview on the screen. And the only drawback is that not all the settings that you had in the old uh, designer uh, are in the screen and QuickBooks is gonna be continuously adding more stuff to this. So uh, that's it in a nutshell. That's how you uh, set up your uh, estimates and invoice, the templates, configure them, add the logo, all that stuff. Hopefully that's, that was useful and that you have an enjoyable QuickBooks Online experience. Check the description below for all the other videos in this uh, tutorial series and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you're notified uh, next time I create a video just like this. Thank you and I'll see you on the next one.